Hey everybody, welcome back to Intuitive Wellness, Lauren, your host, and I'm so glad that you're here. Today I'm going to be speaking about how to listen to your intuition, and there's several layers to this that I believe um, can be helpful to just really explore for yourself. So um, first and foremost, I have multiple videos. <laughs> or recordings um, related to trusting your intuition and what intuition is, how it works. So I would check those things out first if you don't have a clear understanding of that. But this episode is more so how to listen to it. So you've connected with it. You understand how it operates. Um, and then there's a sense of letting go, right? There's a, there's a sense of I'm going to listen to my intuition, but with listening, uh, we need to figure out what is the purpose for listening to it, number one, and then what comes after the listening. <laughs> so if you're on a spiritual awakening path, if you're doing deep healing work, or maybe you're just in on the intuitive path and maybe you need like a little tune up. <laughs> uh, this episode is probably going to be helpful for you. And when we think of intuition, intuition is that deep inner knowing, the wisdom that's held within consciousness. And the highest frequency and expression of that is clarity. Now, with that, if you are experiencing clarity with your intuition and you're at that high level of frequency, which I think ultimately if you are a very intuitive person or you're, you know, you're listening to this, then you're probably wanting clarity. You're probably wanting to exist in that high frequency of the wisdom and the knowledge that is so present and underlying the element of really our existence and that's probably propelling you into learning about how you can listen in to your intuition so several things number one it's really important to know for yourself how to connect to your intuition because intuition is expressed differently it's embodied differently it is ever present and it's always available. However, it's so unique. It's such a it's a unique relationship that we have. And each person has a different experience with intuition. And basically, whatever the history of your soul is, that is very helpful to unpack and explore and discover. Um, because then you can start looking at the archetypal uh, expressions that are shown um, throughout your lineage and maybe even give you a clearer understanding of your intuition. But let's say that you are very much aware of how it shows up. You're aware of how to access it because, well, yeah, intuition 100% is underlying consciousness. It's that, that essence, that magic within awareness. It's the magic within knowledge. And it's not just the knowledge of our egoic mind. It's the knowledge of the universe. It's the knowledge that is ever present. It's basically the Akash of the universe, you know, like it's that forever knowing and it's not bound by anything. It's not compartmentalized. It's not um, in some, some kind of box. It is available 24 seven. It's available to us all the time. But it is an underlying essence. And so it can be, see, it can seem as though it is a challenge to number one, access it, but then number two, to figure out how to listen to it. <clears throat> and this is probably the most simple thing. If you're looking for the simplified answer, it is get quiet and get still. And as humans, we have made things so complex that it can be a challenge to simplify. And this is, <laughs> this is um, you know, something I've experienced. I think just as humans, we experience this. We live in a complex world. We live in complexity. But the intuitive essence is not complex. 
It's foundational. It's, it is an underlying essence. It's the embodiment of the experience of the inner wisdom and inner knowledge. And for whatever reason, I'm having deja vu. <laughs> I think, I think at some point in my life, I had this conversation in my dreams. Um, so yeah, it is so simple and so magical and ultimately if you're on the intuitive path your soul has probably been given a mission to come back to itself in the complexity it's almost like this so envision um, a maze or well really a labyrinth if you can envision a a labyrinth and you're at the start of it and this is your soul's journey is to go throughout this labyrinth and so you're walking through you're trying to find different paths and and whatnot and there comes a point where you take a minute and you're like what am I even doing in here what's the purpose of this where am I going what am I doing why am I in this And as you start having these moments with yourself, it's almost like you start really exploring and discovering within you purpose and meaning. It first starts out as, you know, just the labyrinth alone. But then with time, with each wrong turn, and maybe with each, you know, perceived right turn in the labyrinth, You start discovering more and more about yourself. The element of self-discovery intensifies or increases while you're in this labyrinth. And maybe at one point you sit down, you realize that there is no concept of time while you're in this labyrinth. And it's okay to just take a minute and sit down. And if nobody else is with you, let's just say, yeah, nobody else is with you. Number one, just notice what just happened to your body as you listen to this. And I said, no one else is around you. If that feels comfortable to you, that's something to keep in mind. If that feels scary to you or worrisome, that's also something to keep in mind. Whatever it means to you is going to be unique, but it might help you on your path. But let's say you sit down in this labyrinth. No one else is around. You've spent some time in this labyrinth, in this maze. And you're just like, I just need to sit. And as you sit there, you start wondering. (laughs) Your mind starts looking at different aspects of the maze, whatever it looks like. Obviously, the walls, you you can't see beyond right? You can't see beyond in this space. But as you sit down with yourself, maybe you close your eyes, maybe you feel grass underneath of you or whatever the ground is underneath of you, and you start connecting. You start slowing it down, slowing down the hustle and the bustle of trying to get here and there in this labyrinth and you just allow yourself to start to relax to start to sink in to this space and as you're doing that you're becoming more and more connected to this maze or this labyrinth You start becoming more connected with yourself. Maybe your breathing starts slowing down. Maybe your heart starts slowing down a little bit to a comfortable level. And you start having a different experience. What started out as the beginning of just this wild maze has just turned into 
an experience of connection with yourself and with the maze or the labyrinth. And when you become one with the labyrinth, that's really when you start becoming connected to your intuition. It's a metaphor for the intuition. And as you're continuing to sink deeper into this labyrinth and connecting to it and yourself, your vision beyond the experience starts to enhance. Now again, intuition is expressed differently. So I'm not going to say this is going to be 100% for every, you know, expressed in the same way for everyone. But for myself, if, I, if this was my soul's path in the labyrinth, I'm only speaking on behalf of me because I know how I operate. <laughs> and I sit down in this labyrinth and I'm, you know, doing what we just walked through. As my vision beyond enhances, I start to have clarity. And then maybe I start hearing on the wind or having my spirit guides come in and say, go here, do this. This is how you get out of this. It's a deep inner knowing. And messengers can come within clarity. So I'm not here to tell you what to believe or not to believe. That's not my vibe. You do you. And it's, you know, everybody's lived experience is different. But if you do believe in a spirit team or angels, guides, spirit animals, with clarity and present-mindedness and being in the now, allowing yourself to be in a space of receiving, which is really important when we're talking about so many things, but intuition specifically and how to listen to it. Number one, are we even in a space of receiving it? Are we in a space of receiving the messages? And going back to the labyrinth idea, you know, I'm not saying in a place of receiving where you can change and manipulate your outside space. If you're in a labyrinth, you cannot manipulate it and change it outside of you. And I think so often we anticipate if we do this, move this, shift this, go here, get this, all of these things outside of us, that that might help us align better or help us connect to our intuition. If I do all of the tarot, if I do all of this, if I do all of that, if I do this, do that, well, well, yes, those divination tools or practices or rituals can be beneficial and helpful, especially with framework around, you know, your own energy. Number one, we got to talk about your energy. Putting a structure around something that maybe isn't aligned is really going to ultimately just keep you in a confined state instead of a liberated and free space, which is what intuition exists in the highest frequency is clarity if you are confined or if you're in a space of you know the e the ego manipulating the outside then ultimately you're existing in the clarity of the ego and that can get you somewhere that can get you places like don't get me wrong that can help you like that can be beneficial but I guess it's all dependent on how deep you're wanting to go with your intuition and then listening to it. So being present and, and really just in a space of receiving, in an energetic alignment with, yes, my, I am open to receive. I'm in this place that might seem scary. I'm in this place that, you know, I don't know how to get out of it. I got in this place. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to, what ways to go. You know, life is like that sometimes. And I am just going to be completely straight up with you. If you are on the path of following your intuition, 
the the more strengthened your bond is with the intuition, the more that any forces that are trying to go against that will show up. And so if you are working on listening to your intuition, just know that the stronger the bond that you have with that, it will bring you into alignment. But I don't even know how to put this. Um, it's almost, this is, this is literally it. Okay, so here's another metaphor. Let's say you're swimming with dolphins. Okay, and the water is getting a little rough. And all of a sudden, one of the dolphins, somehow you intuitively know, I need to get on the back of this dolphin and put my hand on it, on its, whatever, it, it's like head thing. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. <laughs> but you know what I mean? And the water is getting rough. But you intuitively know, okay, if I just put my hand in this, on this dolphin in this way, it's going to lead me and guide me throughout all of this rough water. And as you do that, then it's kind of creating a path for you against all of this, you know, all of the tense water. And as you continue on the back of this dolphin that's swimming wherever you are, <laughs> wherever you are, you're on the back of this dolphin, it might be going pretty freaking fast, right? Dolphins aren't just like, sometimes I guess, I don't know, it's not like I chill with dolphins all the time, but like they are, they can be pretty quick swimmers. And if you decided intuitively knew that you needed to get it on the back of this dolphin, then you're trusting it. You listened to the message but don't be shocked and surprised if the outside forces of the water get a little bit rough while you're on the back of that dolphin. And that's very similar to, to you know, following your intuition. You follow it and you continue to listen to it. It clears a path. It is a path because it's the inner knowing of the universe that is found within you and outside of you there is no difference we are all one it's ever present it's always accessible at the end of the day you can look at your body and see literally the outside of our body are pores like we are not separate we are apart and so as we are highly in this concentrated place of clarity connection and we're understanding our intuition. We're understanding how it operates for us. We understand the path that we're on when we're accessing it and understanding it and allowing it, allowing it to inform us of our movement. Not just inform us, but also allow us to be the expert and the teacher. We're, we're being informed and we're the teacher at the same time when intuition is involved. And if you're on the path, just know that your the path isn't the only thing that will exist. There will be outside external experiences that might try to take you off of the path, that might try to run up to your path and like scare the living whatever out of you. And the more that you're on the path, the more you're going to go into uncharted territory and the more it's going to be awesome and beautiful, don't get me wrong, because you're tapping into the known understanding of probably your soul's experience, your soul coming back to its home, your soul coming finding its way out of that labyrinth by using the wisdom and the knowledge and the clarity that of the unseen knowledge that exists the akash of the universe you've connected with that you've listened to it you understand how it operates in your life and you're on this path of clarity it is awesome but it will take you out of everything that you have experienced that wasn't unclear and so ultimately it will take you to a whole whole uncharted reality
which again can be really freaking sweet <laughs> like because ultimately it's alignment with your soul but do not forget that there is also an external world that is very unclear and uncertain that we don't have control over ultimately and if you're trying to seek control outside of you this might not be helpful for you this might be an episode that you can back to at some point but if you are so in tune with your intuition and your soul your soul path this is probably hopefully helpful let me know seriously leave a comment let me know if this is helping you out but as as you're on that path and maybe now okay we go back to the labyrinth the labyrinth thing we're in the labyrinth We've calmed down a little bit, heart rate's down, breathing's a little slower, feeling connected to the space. Coming back to the space. And then we open our eyes. And we just had knowledge transmitted to us as we had our eyes closed, just chilling in this labyrinth. We had the knowledge of water and guidance. You know, for whatever reason, our mind went to a dolphin. and We were swimming with a dolphin. We're in this labyrinth, but we're thinking about a dolphin swimming with it against the currents. And then we saw this path. And then we went into uncharted territory on this path. And now we're back in the labyrinth. We're back to the place where we started. We're not returning the same. We have obtained knowledge. We have obtained understanding, deep understanding, understanding that is very rich. The wealth of knowledge just came to us, provided a little bit of clarity. might feel it might feel after that things have shifted and so as we're reorienting ourselves back to this labyrinth we have a different perspective our vision has shifted so how do we listen to what we just learned number one tap into what stood out to you Number two, maybe think about when you do listen to your intuition, what's going to be different? What's on the other side? Keep, t- keep tapping into that knowledge. Remember your way out of the labyrinth. Remember that you are one with the labyrinth. And the external labyrinth is just a mere reflection of the internal labyrinth within. So you get up off of the floor or wherever you are and now you have the choice to move and operate in a way that feels unique to you, that feels intuitively clear for you based on what you now know. No, intuition is expressed and embodied differently for everybody. Some people might connect with animals. So even thinking about when we were in the mind space of the dolphin, relating to how it felt to be with a dolphin. Do animals feel comfortable for you? Does that come natural to you? Does that relate to you naturally? Because if so, maybe listen to that. Knowing that and remembering that can be helpful because we have to identify, okay, you listen to your intuition. 
You figure out how to listen to it by knowing how it operates. <laughs> we don't want to just listen to something and then just be like, okay, we're, we heard it. All right. I hear that. Yep, I, I received the message. I, I hear it. Well, okay, what are we going to do with it now? How do you listen to your, your intuition? How do you show up? And basically, whatever you're, however you're going to show up, you have to own that. If you have made it this far in this episode... then this message is definitely for you. If you are on the path and you have obtained intuitive knowledge and understanding, what you choose to do with it, you got to own that, man. That's your choice in every single second of every day we're making decisions we're provided with choices and we're making decisions. So what you're deciding to do with that intuitive knowledge, that is yours. No one can take it away from you. And you also can't blame or, sh sh or shame, blame, shame, guilt, whatever, anybody else for what you decide and to do. The more and more that you come back to yourself in moments, um, I mean, in many moments, <laughs> many moments, <laughs> many, 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 many moments, in the many moments of life, when you come back to yourself and you come back to yourself and you come back to yourself and you come back to yourself, ultimately, coming back to your soul's remembrance of the knowledge, all of the knowledge that is. And that state of consciousness connects you deeper into the magical essence, intuition, that leads to the all-seeing clarity. The more you do that, in states of complexity, in states of uncertainty, and even states of triumph and excitement. If we are exuding our energy in a way that is not aligned with the soul and is not an element of the present moment that's something to think about and that's also an opportunity to come back to yourself and there are elements within intuition again it's expressed and embodied differently for everybody but let's say you're psychic you've got psychic skills psychic abilities to be at that very high in tune and intuitive space, it is very important to remain present. Even just a, you know, animal crossing your path on a walk or a message coming from someone or, you know, these subtle nuances within our lived experience we have to be aware and conscious of what's happening in order to connect deeper to the magical essence of intuition and as we do that then you're provided with choices how do you respond how do, that's you know that's something that i would really explore 
you can ask yourself, how am I going to listen to my intuition all day? But have you asked yourself, how am I going to respond? How am I going to respond? It's kind of like, I mean, even think about it like this, going to school. You go to school, you go to a class. Are you going to ask yourself, how am I going to listen to this teacher? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Hey, debatably, maybe. But, you know, you... <laughs> you step in this class, do you ask yourself that? Is that your first question? Or do you ask yourself, how am I going to retain this knowledge? How am I going to respond to this knowledge? How am I going to show up within these teachings? Same thing with intuition. Intuition is basically the, the embodied essence of the knowledge of the universe. It's underlying consciousness. Consciousness being total awareness of all that is without judgment, without criticism, without being here, there. It's just being in the present moment, just being in a state of neutrality. And as we exist in that, then we experience the magical essence of intuition. I hope that this was helpful. Thank you so much for the individuals who have liked, subscribed, commented, all of the things. It's very helpful for the channels to grow. And um, yeah, if you're liking this content, please stick around. <laughs> Maybe subscribe or come back. Um, and yeah, we can connect further on Instagram or I'm on Spotify. And if there's anything that you would love to hear about, please let me know. And yeah, peace level. I'll talk to you in the next episode.